I am so glad we get to be here together. We're going to be exploring neutral and not neutral. Hopefully you'll be discovering the ways that your body is not in neutral and discovering better ways to even it out. All right, welcome. So glad you can be here. So starting off on your back body, go ahead, plant your feet, raise your hips, and you're going to place your block long left to right, right under that sacral triangle. Um, it's kind of that bony triangle at the top of the crack of the butt. So you do not want it in your low back vertebrae. I'm going to ask you to spend time very distinctly in both positions. The two positions being one with the feet flat underneath your knees. And if you've got the block low enough, there's an opportunity actually for your low back to sink towards the floor and it creates kind of a tractioning for the low back. The other position is straightening the legs and letting the body be draped over the block. Now, when you go to do that one, if you feel your kind of pelvis dump forward and down or your pubic bone dump down, that means that the block needs to go further down the body, maybe even just a quarter of an inch. It may not be a lot. All right. Yeah, how's that feeling? What, what can you notice? A big part of uh, kind of discovering what our patterns are is cultivating a deep inward listening so that we can notice the subtle. Uh, many people are you know, busy, our minds are in a lot of other places, and we may not actually hear the body unless it's kind of screaming at us, which not ideal. This is a chance to become practitioners of the subtle. Yeah. So as you're breathing there, I, I hope it's feeling really good. If it isn't, again, always make an adjustment. But see if you can get a big abdominal breath, like you're trying to create a, a Buddha belly, I like to say. And this is valuable for a whole variety of reasons. One, breathing, always good for us. But also we have these deep muscles right here in the low abdomen called the psoas muscles that connect uh, kind of to the inside of these hip bones. And then they run through the body all the way to the back and they connect way up here, kind of right about that bra strap zone at the spine. And they call them our fight or flight muscles uh, as well because they're what allow us to crunch and flee or to fight. But they can become overly tight from all the sitting or you know, kind of forward hunched work. You know, very few of us spend much time in true neutral upright 180 degrees. And of course, staying in this shape only as long as your body can receive it comfortably. And then whatever position you are in, when you're ready, join me please in a few sighing breaths. Inhaling slow, deep and wide through the nose, asking, is there more? <sighs> <gasps> Lovely. You guys look so great, so relaxed. <sighs> Our sighing breaths actually help create a little neutral for the spirit and nervous system. It says, I'm safe, I'm whole, I'm well, non striving. When you are complete, come off of your object of support and please join me and bringing both knees into the belly. So a nice bend the other direction. And I'm gonna ask you to scan your neck and shoulders a moment. Do they feel easeful? If not, slide those shoulders down the back and bring the elbows in and see if the neck feels more liberated. You might even roll the head side to side. And then we're going to slowly take the knees wide. And I've just got my hands on the kneecaps there. I'm keeping my feet flexed. And we're going to come into our half straddle going side to side. So first I'm going to bring my left hand around behind my left thigh. And I'm going to try and straighten my left leg out into that supportive hand. 
and point, flex the foot, roll the ankle. Again, breathing soft through the neck. And as you're ready, you'll switch. We're gonna hang out here for a little bit, going back and forth. So notice perhaps any differences side to side. Are you tighter in the IT band, that outer area of the thigh that runs from hip to knee? or in the inner thigh and adductors perhaps. Notice what's there. Can you straighten your leg completely? And if not, what's resisting? Sometimes I will re-bend the leg and then kind of re-straighten like I'm trying to push something away with my heel. And then perhaps you might take both legs out into a straddle. Nice long inhale. On your exhale, pushing belly to spine, spine to floor, and just one little sit up motion, pressing the hands through the thighs. I've got my chin tucked so my neck is easy. And then a slow release. I'm going to use my hands for support. Bring them back in, plant the feet for bridge pose. And we would love to be in a neutral or straight alignment here, such that the hips knees and feet are in the same plane. So we don't want the feet wider knees in, and we don't want the knees winging out. So let's work our shoulder blades a little beneath us. And on your next exhale, slowly rising through the hips. Asking is there hold. On the inhale, descending slowly as you can. You're really working the back body to control the descent. Completing that inhale and exhaling and rising again. Do a few like this. I find that the slow descent offers some nice decompression of the spine. Some of you maybe do something similar with a foam roller. That can feel pretty fabulous. You might add your soft ujjayi breath, that little Throat contraction that creates a, a breath that sounds like wind in the trees. Let's do one more rising up and we're going to hold. I'm going to make sure my feet are no more than four or five inches apart. I've got my hands on my hips as I decide to raise one foot, hovering it just an inch off the floor. And slowly switching. So Right now, we're really isolating the back line, the posterior chain, kinetic chain, it's called. And we're isolating it in order to wake it up, get it strong. Because while you might experience it as very tight and you think therefore strong, mostly, most people, it's pretty tight and weak. And we need it. If we're gonna find yummy neutral in our body, we need that back body doing its job. If this is feeling good, you want a little more intensity, try straightening the leg, leg extension, heel flexed, and make sure the hip is not dropping. And if it does, then you bring it back up. And then in your own time, a slow, slow release. And I'm gonna just give the legs a little kick, it feels good, and release my hamstrings. And then walking the soles of the feet together and allowing the knees to rest down towards the floor, a relaxed butterfly. And also rotating palms open to the sky. Our front of our body and our interior is also typically very tight. So here is a chance to broaden and open through the chest and the arms leg. Invitation to strengthen through that deep inner line of the thighs and groin area by raising the hips just an inch perhaps. Nice deep breath. There's really nothing else to focus on here. So if your mind wanders, please Bring it to this moment. And metaphorically speaking, this moment is neutral. Uh, a lot of our time and energy is spent thinking forward or in reverse. <laughs> what would life
I feel like if we spent more time right here in neutral, this moment, this body, this breath. Slow, slow release, extending the legs straight, but if I need to take them wide and giving a little break to those hips and those IT bands along the side of the leg. I'm gonna come into abdominal pumping, gathering a long inhale. Exhale, empty the breath and hold the breath out. With it held out, draw the belly in like you're saying, see how skinny I am? And push it to the sky. And as you do this pumping, there's an opportunity to really get to know what's in your center. Maybe breakfast, if you mm -hmm. ate right before you came. But more importantly, we tend to hold a lot of emotional stress here. Just any hurrying or worrying that you've had in your life lately might have taken up residence, and we want to declutter that. So let's do one more round. Here's some nice size. That's often what I do after belly pump as well. And when that next one is complete, inhale and sweep the arms overhead and just begin actively and randomly stretching, flexing, pointing to the wrists and ankles, rolling through the wrist and ankle joints, reaching long through one arm and then the other. This is our first chance to notice really any distinct differences in the shoulders. Marvelous. Now we're gonna come into our reclined pigeon because it is one of those poses we really need every day in my opinion. Please flex the right ankle, place it on the left thigh, and if you'd like, raise the left foot off the floor. Hug the right knee with your hands. Draw it in nice and tight to your chest, and then send it a little towards the center line. Most of us, it won't take far before we get something exciting. If you're bored, you're not doing it right, or you're just not listening anymore. <laughs> you know, it's not always an extreme sensation, but it should be like a massage. Where you're like, oh, wow, yeah. <sighs> and checking neck and shoulders for unnecessary tension. When you feel ready to switch, replace the floor foot. Release that crossed leg and opposites now, left ankle on the right thigh. Keeping your feet flexed is stability and safety for the knees. Hug the left knee tight to the chest. Remember, no wings, no shrugs through elbows and shoulders. And send it a little to the right. I hope you're seeing inward, looking through kind of that deep inner eye to notice as much subtlety as you can. I always like to say we're following the clue trail, <laughs> getting to know our body better, knowing how to listen inward so that we can hear whether the body wants more or less of a thing or what its pattern is that it needs help unwinding. Your own time, slowly replace the floor foot and uncross. And we're going to take those feet wide and just slowly settle the right knee towards the center line. If this hurts, don't do it. If there's just some intensity, get to know it. One more big breath. And we'll slowly switch other knee, settling towards the center line. So again, this is with your feet wide, kind of out at the edges of the mat. Good. Let's switch again, right knee down, and then reach that right arm up and back as powerfully as you can. And I'd like you to see, can you get your arm so that that bicep is really coming kind of in towards the ear? And if you can't, know that that's telling you there's some kind of restriction in that shoulder joint that it's not able to do its full natural range of motion. If you take a deep belly breath, do you feel some nice stretch in that right abdomen, maybe in that psoas I was talking about here? 
Return the arm to the body, switch knees. So left knee down, left arm reaching. Ideally, the arm is karate chop straight. You guys look really good. Neck relaxed, tongue relaxed. Just the, the tip of the tongue lightly connecting at the roof of the mouth. Yeah. Is this side different? All right, and then slowly back to center. Please walk your feet all the way together so the inner line of the feet are touching. <coughs> Excuse me, you've got contact all the way through the inner knees and inner thighs. So it's like you have one trunk of a leg. I'm not going to work my shoulder blades in under me again because that is so lovely for your spine. Ever so slowly, raise the hips, coming only as high as you can without losing connection through any part of the legs. Breathe. If you're feeling tension through the neck, try releasing the chin up and back. If you're like me, you might be feeling a little fatigue or quivering from trying to hold this position. That's all right. If it hurts, let it go. Otherwise, one more breath, waking up that inner line. And release the knees to belly. Whew. We're going to come on up to seated. And I'm going to invite you to come into a straddle pose. So you might wonder if what we're trying to do is find neutral in our body, why would we take our body into so many non-neutral positions? Well, because we get to figure out what's going on in the partnering muscle group. So I'm going to have everyone, if you, by the way, are having a hard time sitting upright, you feel yourself kind of slouched back, take a little cushion or a folded blanket. I've got a couple folded blankets right here. I'm happy to have a piece of steel. This is my favorite little bean bag. I will lend it to anyone who wants it. So we would love to feel what is happening in the outside leg. And this is one of the few chances that this outside line with the IT band can relax. So I'm gonna have you kind of take your hands, you're taking your fingers like you're kind of plucking big guitar strings or something. I'm using my fingers to draw up. You guys have anything exciting in there? Anybody? Yeah? You looked a little too relaxed, but maybe it was just your deep inward focus. I thought they're not finding the IT band. They just look too relaxed and happy. It can be kind of intense. And most of us will have a specific area. Maybe it's like right above where it connects into the knee joints. Maybe it's kind of higher up, right below where the hip connection is. Sometimes I'll even feel like a little bruisey in some of those places. That little tinkle in the back. The little tinkle in the back. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Isn't that interesting? It's all connected. That happens to me when I work the lower leg. I'll get a little bit kind of nerve, a little, little nuts on me. So, <clears throat> any of you who are leg crossers, in fact, let's just sort of come, come in a moment. And let's just right here cross our right ankle over left, for example. And if you go and you feel the IT band right here, how tight and taut it is. And then if you would take it back out and just notice if you give it the same poke, poke, it's a different animal, right? So I'm not saying you can never ever cross your legs. By all means, do it for 20 seconds and then on cross. <laughs> We're designed to cross the center line, right? To grab things, cook a pot of stew over an open fire, whatever. We are not designed to sit like this for a long period of time. It is a torque on the whole system. So um, that's our little IT band lesson. We're going to come up to standing and just do a little bit more investigation with that. I'm going to grab my block. And when you're ready, you're going to stand and take your block between the thighs, right above the knees. Look down and see that your feet are parallel. <laughs> and of course, move your, your legs in and out as needed so that this feels neutral, that you're not like being bowed out or anything funky by the block. Yeah. It's good. I like it. Other people were looking at their feet too, see if they're neutral and kind of spreading the toes. What's that? Using your fingers? Yeah, to tell your feet what to do. So using one hand on the belly, one hand on the low back. We're just going to play a moment. You can have your eyes closed. I want you to squeeze the block and notice what happens in the pelvis and then relax. And it may not be a big movement. 
I have a smaller movement now than I used to, but it's still significant in my body because I tend to have a little bit of a sway back. And until I squeeze that block, my hips tend to be tilted back or the tailbone tilted back, it folds forward. And when I squeeze that block, it kind of the pubic bone settles in underneath. Now to be clear, we're never trying to hyper tuck, right? We want to find neutral. And just to know what your habits are, not everyone's body has the same issue as mine, etc. So I'm going to ask you to take the block out a moment. But I'm going to have you intentionally create a quote misalignment that some people have, which is asking you to just bring your knees in towards each other a little bit. Just use your knees to point at each other and then feel what that feels like. Don't worry, you don't have to stay here long. Okay, relax that. And then I'm going to ask you to take your, your feet so they're angled out and what they often call like duck footed or whatever, right? And this I see a lot. I see this a lot actually weirdly as like heart contractors and so you exactly hips and just sit those hips forward and you're talking and you're hanging out. I want you to just scan your body and notice where you feel tension. I feel it right in my low back sacral area. Yeah, not nice. All right, let's find neutral again, shall we? And then we're going to go up just a little higher in the body and then we're going to come into some of our, our yogic postures. I'm hoping with maybe just a little new intelligence and awareness. So the next thing, once you've got that pelvis, whatever you've now found is your sense of neutral, where there's some effort, there should be effort in this front abdominal area. You can also add your pelvic floor, engaging as if you're trying to cut off the flow of urine. And then I want you to just notice what happens if you thrust your chest forward, shoulders back. How many of us have been told to do that? Chest out, shoulders back, yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> they were trying to get you into a neutral spine. It's the wrong cue, I found, okay? So actually what I'd like you to do is settle those shoulders wherever you want. And we're gonna do a few little exercises. First, I want you to shrug, which we generally tell you not to do, and let go. Let's do that a couple few times. And then just circling. Remember to keep engaging a little bit in that block area. Forwarding, circling them back and then circling them forward. Lovely. And then finding an external rotation for the shoulders. So the palms rotate forward, Jai airplane. And I'd like you to make it peaceful. So I know when I first do it, I have a lot of like engagement, whatever. Make it peaceful. And if we had a mirror, it would be lovely because I'd love for you to look to the side in your mirror, but you might be able to look and just see your own shoulder joint. If it seems like it's right to the kind of neutral below the ear and above the hip. When you have a chance, have someone who takes photos of you in your normal way of standing. And then with this, I'm gonna have you send your head forward, like you're sliding your chin forward and then draw it back. Do that a few times. I was trying to describe the drawing the chin back thing to somebody in class the other day. I know a few of you were there at Third Mountain. And they said, oh yeah, uh, as physical therapists, they always were told to teach someone, pretend you're trying to draw away from someone who's kissing you. <laughs> I thought that was funny. I was like, I get it. But I always say, pretend you're giving yourself a double, kind of double chin, okay. Finding that, and my hope is that when you have it in what is neutral, you can move your head and it feels a little like a top or a weeble wobble. In other words, fairly liberated. Yeah. And if you take your head forward again, try to move your head a little side to side and notice it feels constricted. Right? Yeah. All right. Let's open the jaw wide. Nobody's looking at you. Big inhale, exhale, lion stretch. Notice how much your body maybe needs that. Do it twice more. I'm hoping you're doing it intensively enough that you feel some engagement right here at the base of the skull. A lot of TMJ issues are caused by a misalignment of the head forward. And so drawing it back, relax those muscles. Excellent. On your next inhale, sweeping out. Look, please, that your arms are truly straight out. Why? Because I see a lot of arms back. Not with you guys. I just mean it happens a lot. Then uh, continuing up. 
I'd like you to pause where it feels good. In other words, don't go so far close together that you feel neck tension. And on your exhale, palms out, flexing through the hands. That could be quite an interesting stretch in the forearms and armpit. Those must be tight. Uh, right at the bottom here, just point and flex your hands a little bit, roll those wrists. And let's continue. Inhale, sweeping out and up, neck neutral. Is there more? Exhaling out and down. As we do a couple more, scan your body for any funky habits. So maybe you've forgotten about your feet or you've stopped squeezing the block or you've sent your chest forward. What are your funky habits? I feel like funky is a nicer word than bad habits. One more inhale, it will hold up. And what I'd like you to see is, can you identify is your arm straight out from the ear? Again, if I had a, a mirror or a camera, I would do a photo and you'd be able to see. So versus forward of the ear or back of the ear. I'd love it, right side. Lovely, yeah, I love it. You guys are checking each other out, give each other nods. <laughs> Excellent. On your exhale, slowly bring hands into prayer. Think about bringing your shoulder blades towards each other without sending the chest forward. So just neutral, <clears throat> active front and back. Ah. Yeah. So we're going to bring our hands around to the back yoga mudra. So we're intertwining the fingers and drawing down through the fist. <coughs> As you're ready, pressing the hands away from the hips and returning. <clears throat> so when I do this it is taking my shoulders back of neutral because I'm trying to give this front body a stretch so it can be fine to neutral because most of us are hunched forward of neutral. So notice where the resistance is for you if you're experiencing it. Not everyone does. Yeah, and if you're having a hard time getting the arms straight, the strap is a wonderful friend, <coughs> a scarf, etc. Oh, you're such good yogis. Thank you. Love it. And then don't rush to meet my words. You might still be enjoying that. We're going to come around in front of neutral, way in front, across your right <laughs> hand, across the body, and thread the needle, left hand at the elbow. And I'd love you to send a big deep breath into your upper back. It's like you've got wings blossoming. Mm. Releasing, bring the left arm around in front. Big breath blossoming. Always taking the neck where it's most relaxed, whatever that is for you today. I always like to remind you guys that, you know, I don't know what's in your body. I mean, sometimes you don't even know what's your body when you've gotten to the yoga mat, right? So this is discovery. So always listen to your body versus what I might be suggesting. And then letting it go. And if you would, placing your hands right here on your sternum. And what I'd like you to do is to just feel for a moment all these connections along the front of the sternum bone right here. And you might feel between the ribs and just notice if there's anywhere that's particularly sore or tight. Yeah. And one of the fascinating things is how useful just working at the skin or the fascia, which is this little layer beneath the skin is, <coughs> excuse me, so I'm going to ask you if you can make connection with skin, like get your hand inside your t-shirt or whatever, and you can use your whole palm. I've got my other palm on top. I want you to draw down through the skin as you inhale and reach up through the chin. And return. Good. Let's do that twice more. I do this to people on the massage table. Does it feel good? Yeah. <laughs> it can totally make you cough because it gets into all of your throat tissues and all up into these deep connections under the jaw. So again, anyone who really suffers with some TNJ and so on, very useful. All right. And lastly, in our little love up in the hopes of finding a delicious neutral for our neck, go ahead and place your hands around your neck in a collar. And I've just got my fingertips touching at the back. I'm not interweaving. And I'm going to gently support my head circling 
around the top of that collar. And we're doing this this way because the hands are supporting these vertebrae. And then there's an ability to release stored tension right up here at the base of the skull connection to the neck here. So the and I'm going to ask you to now to give such a beautiful invitation to that whole area to stay soft, liberated, and neutral while we come into our warrior flow. As you're ready, find your feet planted, mountain stance, right? Five, six inches apart, something like that. Neither in nor out. And we'll find neutral, whether you would like to be in your jet airplane arms, which I realize isn't truly neutral, but your shoulders hopefully are. Maybe you're in prayer hands. Three breaths with attention to that beautiful gap or pause that exists between the turns of the breath. Does your mind run off thinking about other things? Bring it back to this moment, this body, this amazing body, this breath. On your next long inhale, sweeping out and up to wherever it feels yummy. Exhaling prayer hands, we're gonna lift our left knee standing crane. I'm gonna ask you to hold here for a couple of breaths. Balance challenges are wonderful, but they often make us do funny things like shrug our shoulders, jut our head, squish our tongue against the roof of the mouth. Find as much ease in this powerful pose as you can. As you slowly step back with that left foot, keep the hip bones straight forward so there is no rotation of the hip joints at all. It's as if you're still standing. Good. And we're going to play with arms. So <clears throat> depending what you've got going on today, man, it can feel fun to kind of do some slicing. I find I enjoy that, but I take on less tension if I keep my arm a little wider than the shoulder joint versus trying to get it tight to the ear. Just see what you think. And yes, it's a balance challenge as well. So the main goal is to be here and breathe, maybe even smile in your state of relaxation. As we take another long inhale, I'm gonna take my chest forward and I'm gonna look up a little bit through the chin. This should bring a stretch right into that left psoas muscle. Exhaling, I'm gonna bring the arms back down and the spine into neutral and I'm gonna hinge forward a little bit. Some of you might go a lot so that your body's kind of parallel with the floor, but just even a little bit, you'll feel all this work happening in your back line. And coming back up, plant that back foot in your warrior two. So the back foot is 90 degrees from the front foot. And I like to pulse a few times before I really fully embody the pose. One, I want to check that my front foot's far enough that the knee is arriving above the heel, not behind it or in front of it. Two, I'm going to externally rotate these thighs so that this thigh bone is completely straight. If your thigh bone is to the inside of your foot at all, send your right butt cheek towards that left edge of the mat and think about externally rotating. Then reaching out from the heart, perhaps looking out of that back hand. If I tell you there's only one more breath here, maybe you'll be like, oh, I go a little deeper. I don't have to hold it. <laughs> Inhaling, straighten the legs, exalted warrior, reaching up. We're going to hang out here in this pose for a moment. One of the greatest sort of misalignments, if you want to call it that, that I see happen here in this pose for people often is that when I say that you want to stretch the front body, a lot of people crank themselves back and you compress your left rib cage, it's fine. So what I want you to do for a moment, take your left hand on your left ribs, if you can. Think about reaching straight up to pick like an apple or something. And then see if you can send your ribs a little more towards the front, the right ribs. So left ribs move forward towards right ribs. Then see if you can sweep back along the ceiling a little bit. And I'm hoping what you feel is a wonderful bend, but without any compression. And you can breathe it. Let's take one more long inhale. 
exhaling slowly forward into our lateral stretch. It's very important here that you do not send your butt out behind and your head and chest to the left. We want to be flat, like we're between two panes of glass. So kind of scan your own body. If coming down elbow to thigh forces that butt out behind, then just maybe use hand to thigh. That's a nice option. You can still get a beautiful stretch through your left side here. If you want deeper, which sometimes people do, you can work that hand towards the floor, but only if it doesn't move your butt at all. <laughs> I find I have to be very specific with that. People are like, oh, but just a little bit, and then I can get my hand on the floor. Why? Why do you need your hand on the floor? We are going to release out into downward facing dog, or if you want, you can get there in about five other movements combined. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to come over the ball of my back foot. I'm going to actually create a little more distance between my right and left foot side to side. I'm going to take a nice breath in, and on my exhale, I'm going to create a powerful cat back to see if I can lift my foot rather than drag it. Whoa, and hello, downward facing dog. Great place to release those shoulders. In order for that to happen in your body, would it feel good to take your hands a little wider? Notice. Can you think about rotating your shoulders externally away from the ears? Yeah, that can create some really nice space for that shoulder girdle. Mm -hmm. See if there's any more straightening in the arms that can be done. Think about pushing the floor away. Any more activity in the hands? Can you spread the fingers wide? One more deep breath in and out. Yeah, then we're going to find ourselves in mountain at the front of the mat. I'm going to get there by stepping forward into ragdoll, one of the best spine decompression poses that we have. I love it. So I'm just going to hang out there for a couple. <sighs> Let the head go. Please try to have your weight midfoot. And when you're ready to come up, do it in a couple of distinct movements. When your inhale starts, drop your butt into a chair. Then continue by pressing up. This is nice and safe for the back. And the hamstrings. Exhaling, resolve and prayer. Notice your heartbeat. Let's find our flow on the other side. Inhaling, sweeping out and up. Enjoy the journey. Exhaling, prayer hands, right knee lifts. Couple of breaths here. Remember, you can bend your standing legs, but you just feel a little more buoyant. It's sometimes easier to respond to the balance challenges. If your inner line of your standing foot is releasing from the floor at all, try to tighten up your inner thigh and butt to push down. As you're ready, we'll step back into pressing lunge, hip bones shining straight forward, your version. Maybe it's hug emoji, maybe it's prayer hands. Remember, you can have that back leg like bending and dipping if you want, or working it towards straight. Always check that the foot and knee are aligned here and in our next poses, of course, as well. And as we're ready, last inhale here, I'm gonna invite a little back bend which again, I'm not leaning back, I'm actually sending the ribs forward. Deep belly breath. Mm -hmm. And then planting that back foot into your Vajrasana two, warrior two. It's so important that that back foot is really anchored and that's the place from which we are gonna send the hips forward. If you don't fully push with that back foot, one of the dangers is that the knee can actually get compressed towards the floor. And that's putting pressure on that center joint. We don't want that at all. So once your arms are extended, you might just check out your own alignment. Are your arms straight out from the heart? Sometimes people tend to bring them behind. I'm not seeing much of that today. You guys are just spot on. it like to be in this powerful pose? I'm hoping it feels powerful and peaceful. And in a way, isn't that the kind of 
energy we'd love to embody as we move through life. No striving, but also not checked out, right? I am here, boom. Let's do one more breath. I'm here and I'm peaceful and I'm noticing the present moment, the light on my hand. Inhale, exalted warrior, straight up. And I didn't draw attention to this on the last side, but for a moment, give your attention to that front thigh. <clears throat> I'm going to place my left hand on it, and I'm going to invite those thigh muscles to engage and jump against my touch. Why? Because a lot of people will tend to just lock that knee and they're hanging on the joint. I want all of your muscle tissue supporting that joint. So boom, and you should see your knee pop out of lock. All right, once you've got that, we're reaching up. I'm going to take my right hand on my right side of my ribs. I'm going to send my ribs forward towards the other so right ribs towards left ribs. Then I'm gonna sweep back maybe an inch, maybe three, six, I don't know, to pick a piece of fruit. Doesn't matter how far back you go, it should feel good. Deep inhale and notice how it tends to travel into that open rib cage. Then as you're ready, send the hips forward to come into our lateral stretch, elbow to thigh as our starting point. Stack that right shoulder back over the left. And I literally take my hand to my shoulder sometimes and I go, draw it back. Good. Another place, two places I want you to check in this pose. One is this xiphoid process, kind of right where the ribs come up together. This is a place where people tend to jump forward. I want you to draw back into your body there and you'll feel how all of a sudden your core is like bam, right? You like bam. <laughs> and then also think about your neck. Where is neutral? That was pretty much right in alignment. Most people will have their head forward and if we don't check it. Is the back leg straight? Can you reach something just a little further out beyond your fingertips for this very last inhale? What if I told you the button for world peace is right beyond your middle finger? Yep, I found a little more space. All right, releasing slowly into preparation for downward facing dog. I'm going to note before I try to create the pose, are my hip bones shining forward equally? And this is important because otherwise my hips are wagged and my low back is going to be under pressure. Right? So if I've got my hips out to my left, I'm missing a chunk. When you're ready, downward facing dog and have fun pedaling it, pressing one heel towards the floor and the other. Yeah. And feel this pose. Once you've got your hands, your shoulders, I'm going to ask you to check in again with that xiphoid process, that little place kind of right at the center of the rib cage. See if you can draw that part into your back body and let that power carry your hips up and back even more. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. Yes, your arms got straighter, right? All of a sudden, there was less weight on your wrists. You guys look good. <laughs> and of course, come out anytime you want in the child's pose, but if you're loving it, hold, oh, right? Right? Yeah, that base of the thumb and the index finger. Mm -hmm. That's part of what's going to help keep our shoulders straight, those arms. Yes. Looking good. Child's pose. Yes. So as you're ready, child's pose, you'll settle those knees wide. Letting the butt pull back towards the heels. If you go to settle your forehead to the floor and it's simply too far, consider placing a block there. Otherwise, you might have fists stacked or you might have your forehead on the floor and the arms extended forward. If so, sometimes it's nice to bring them in and connect index finger and thumbs. Would it feel good to roll the head side to side? So as you roll from temple to temple, if you will, you're getting this marvelous kind of tilting also through the armpits and rib cage. We're doing a little um, shoulder physical therapy today in the hopes of helping us find more neutral through the shoulders. You know, the shoulder is the most versatile bone in the body, well, joint. Um, but very few of us sort of live that versatility. Um, 
I mean, I've had whole days where if I hadn't taught yoga, I wouldn't have brought my arm out to the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? So this is a, considered kind of a tractioning pose where I'm going to be engaging but not moving the arm. So we begin in table pose. And you know, let's just do a little cow cat actually to find that right core work for the pose. Intelligent hands, inhaling, draw the heart forward, tailbone back. Make sure you're not collapsing. This is like a beautiful suspension bridge. Exhaling, tuck the tailbone. See if you can raise the spine towards the heavens a little more, head hanging. Cow pose. I encourage you, stay in the pose until you're certain you have gathered every bit of inhale you can, because you'll get that lovely extra stretch through the lungs and ribs. The next time you're in cat back, notice all the core support and maintain that as you come into your neutral, kind of stable table, as I call it. We're going to come down onto the right forearm, and I'm going to just move it in just a little bit towards center, just a little. Then you're going to power down into the floor and also power back like you're trying to bring your elbow to your knee, but again, without moving, you're just pushing. Then as you're ready, on your next exhale, slowly send the hips back towards the heels. We're going to stay working on this side for a number of rounds. So we inhale to this starting place and we exhale and draw back taking as much time as you can at the very end of the exhale. Now, if you're not feeling much at all, try walking your forearm a little forward or your knees a little back. Usually it's that, that you've got too close for the stretch to really work. Is there anybody here who's not getting something? Yeah, you get it. Good. Yeah, and notice where. It's great. I can see some people kind of taking their hand and being like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Parts of our body that we don't even think about and that we don't usually hear, but are, in my experience as a body worker as well, are a major participant mm -hmm. in shoulder and neck pain. When you feel ready to switch, you'll come back up and so you're on both hands again. You can always do a little cow cat or spin your arm, whatever you want to do. And then we'll come down to the left forearm, a little in from center. Tractioning down and back, nice core support. Big inhale here. Exhale, slowly sending the hips back. Is the side different? Inhaling, returning. Exhale back. So one of my favorite things is to hold in the back position and take another long inhale. And sometimes the stretch or massage experience I get from that is amazing. Anybody finding anything good? Oh yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. I was like, you're awfully quiet out there. Very focused, I like it. <laughs> yeah, and some of you have done this with me before, and so you might have the same experience I do of like noticing how much it maybe has changed since you first did it. But I'm also amazed given the amount of work I do on my shoulders, how much intensity and stagnation can still be in there. Yeah. When you are complete, come out, and then I'm going to ask you to notice what your body might like. It might feel really great to go into downward facing dog again, or you might want to do some just gentle circling and range of motion. We are going to be doing the recline uh, over the bra strap uh, over a, an object. So we'll be doing that as a group. Otherwise, in your own time, finding what your body is asking for. If you're moving into dog series, and actually, if you're even just going to do downward facing dog, I want you to see if you can find a moment in downward facing dog where you feel that your wingtip of your shoulder blade tucks in towards the ribs. And it can be kind of an amazing experience. That's part of what we're going to be experiencing when we're reclined over the block. But it's really cool to find it in an active pose. 
And if you can't feel that, don't worry about it. Everything in good time. <laughs> like I said, for quite a long time when I first started yoga, my shoulders were completely forward of my spine and they did not want to move. So you cannot make a thing happen, but it's kind of fun to tune in. Wow, yes. If you're going into dog series from there, I'll just talk you through it. As you inhale forward to your plank, either knees or feet, please think about those shoulders drawing down into the body. So you've got a really peaceful neck before you go anywhere. Hips are in alignment between heels and head, so they're not dipping. And on the exhale, Chaturanga, I'm just gonna bend the elbows to slowly lower the chest, then the hips come last. Inhaling Cobra, nice long neck, or if you want, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. As I said, the best practice is when your body tells you what it needs. Beautiful, I'm seeing some jet airplane, I'm seeing some quadriceps stretch and bow pose, yummy. Forearm plank, yes, happy baby, yes. All of the above, yes. All right, so I'm gonna just talk through getting oneself set up for the, the bra strap shoulder opener. The bra strap, of course, the theoretical bra strap that you may or may not wear one uh, is along the rib cage down below the, the wingtip of the shoulder blade. So if you've ever had a bra strap that got really stretched out and it just hiked up onto your shoulder blades, right? That's not where it's supposed to be. <laughs> so if you're going to use a block under the bra strap, I would love for most of us to have handy a blanket or a cushion or something that you'll be able to tuck under your head. Because for most people, this block is actually higher than you would want um, to, to really enjoy the stretch. I always like to say we're seeking the ah, okay? So you can take the block, or if you want to just use a rolled up blanket so it's less intense. And again, you want to check that your uh, shoulder blades are not going to be on the object, but above. And then slowly recline over. I'm going to take my little cushion and tuck it under the, the head. And I'll tell you, sometimes like you just need a little quarter inch adjustment to kind of go, ah. Uh, what I'm hoping you're feeling, among other things, is the wingtips of the shoulder blades being able to tuck up into the body. If that's not happening, take your arms out to the sides, like in a T, and rotate the palms to the ceiling. That alone might give you a little more of that feeling. And then there's the opportunity to add a reach. So I'm gonna take the right arm to the sky and I'm gonna bring it straight back behind me. I'm not trying to reach the floor with my thumb. I'm trying to reach the walls with my middle finger, the wall behind me. And just that act right there might tuck that wing tip of the blade up in towards you. And then you can play with further massage by kind of pulsing the arm away from the ear and towards you. And you're gonna take all the time you like with that one side. Uh, sometimes I, I like to, when I bring the arm in towards the ear, rotate my face away from the bicep. When you do end up coming off your object, so I'm not saying that's now, I just uh, want you to know when the time comes, please do roll a little to one side. Sometimes people try to sit up and that actually will cause a great deal of tightness through that front of the neck. And we are looking for delicious neutral, right? So <clears throat> I'm gonna prattle on just briefly about pillows. Uh, you may or may not have one that you're using here, but most of us use one at night. And the very common misalignment that I see happen is that people use a pillow that is too big for them if they are a back sleeper in particular. So they use one that projects their head 
off the bed and shortening the front of the neck and then pulling on the back. Um, and if that's done to an extreme, it can actually affect the way that you walk. I've seen that happen um, with people who then became so tight in the front line. I'm talking about maybe somebody in their 80s. They couldn't actually lay flat. Uh, but within a couple of weeks of doing yoga, could, which is pretty cool. So one of the things that also happens is people who are side sleepers don't use pillows that are big enough. And their head is dropping and their shoulder is scrunched. And so they get all this like tension. Also, if you're a side sleeper, you want to ideally have a little pillow between your thighs because otherwise that top knee is coming down below the hip and kind of pulling on the hip and the low back. Right? So back to back sleeping, and I'll invite you to just sort of experience this and now if you decide to create like corpse pose, Shavasana for your resting time. We would love to have the chin tilting upward a little bit, such that again, the back of the neck isn't being pulled. So I'm gonna ask you, even though you don't have a pillow, most of you, to just experiment with this a moment. Feel this from the inside. When you have your chin in towards your throat, which I know I had to do when you were standing, but now laying down, you have your chin in towards your throat, most of us will feel a pull in the back of the neck. If you bring your chin up and back a little bit, you might even take your hand to the back and feel the beautiful restored curve. Isn't it amazing? You have all these little vertebrae in there and all the erector spinae that go up the spine that allow the space, that allow us to not have compression. <clears throat> Once you find what feels like most neutral, <coughs> consider rolling the head side to side, listening deeply in word. <coughs> Excuse me. And I want to acknowledge that laying on a hard surface, even if you're at home on the carpet, um, it's harder than your bed. Sometimes that neutral does not actually feel really great <laughs> on people's bodies. So remember, you can always tuck a, a folded blanket underneath the pelvis. You can bend the knees. You could be in butterfly legs or again, in entirely different pose, like child's pose or embryo pose. You could take the legs off the wall. These next minutes of our practice where we'll do a little pranayama and then a little yogic sleep are really the most important. You've done a lot of deep inward listening and also communicating with your body, helping it let go of old patterns and find new neutral. So I hope that you will give your body this time of non-thinking, non-effort to integrate. Let's begin with three more sighing breaths to settle. Inhaling slow, deep and wide as if it's all you would ever do. And exhaling, sighing, releasing. And inviting you to settle in for a few rounds of breath locks. If you decide you want to continue the pranayama practice, you of course can, but otherwise three rounds. A nice soft inhale through the nose. A soft exhale through the nose. And then holding out external breath lock. Notice the little gentle tensions and tugs and pulls. See if you can hold just past the initial instinct to release the lock. When you do, inhale and hold in, internal breath lock.
Then we may need to release the lock too. We'll continue for two more rounds, emptying, holding out, and then filling, holding in. Holding as long as we can without struggle, without true tension building. Ask, can I soften around this? You might even add a soft smile to the lips. The body recognizes that wholeness, safety, ease. Box are complete. You're welcome to release the breath practice. Let your breath settle into the soft and passive breath of the baby sleeping. <clears throat> With each exhale, the body is sinking more deeply in gravity. Down, down. Be aware if my voice would stay deeply introverted. Then you found that lovely, gentle space where there's greater connectivity between your subconscious mind, body, a greater boldness. Here we can often hear more subtle 
information and messages from the body. So I'm going to ask you to do a little scan, taking your attention from one end to the other, simply asking for the body to share. Is there anything from the practice that was an aha moment, maybe when we were studying neutral versus non-neutral? Was there a particular posture that felt helpful? When you complete your scan, you might bring your hands to heart or belly. Deep message of appreciation for this incredibly wise and strong body, all the ways that it is repairing and recalibrating all the time on our behalf. And I'd like to affirm that even if we have had a pattern for 10, 15 years, a pain pattern, a, an alignment pattern, it does not mean it can't be changed into a more neutral, more ease. We just haven't found the right tools yet. So here is to that process discovery, finding more ease in our body. Om Shanti Shanti. Om Peace. Peace. Namaste. to see you again soon at the mat. I hope you're enjoying all these days of summer fully. And I hope you make yoga a part of it so you can just uh, physically feel great for everything. <coughs> Thanks. See you soon. <laughs>